Hello, everybody. Uh, coming to you live from the ABN show floor. Holly Randall here for Joy City, the first erotic metaverse. Make sure that you go to joy.city and enter your email to get updates on this exciting new platform. I have here the gorgeous Lexi Luna, Hi. who we were just laughing, is uh, the first person to actually show up as scheduled and on time. So this is what I love about MILFs, I yeah. have to say. <laughs> like, I love shooting MILFs because they're on time, they're fucking prepared, they read the script, they have their wardrobe. And uh, you're up for MILF Performer of the Year, is that right? I am. I was very surprised because, you know, I feel like I'm still a little young for the MILF category, but the fans love me in, in that position and I love doing it and it's so much fun to be the woman in charge, yeah. right? Well, you know, as long as you're like 28 or... Yeah. Or have fake boobs. Yeah, or 25 with lip injections, yeah. then you can be a MILF in you the porn You too industry. can be a MILF. You too can be a MILF. <laughs> just get way too much plastic surgery at a young age and you too can be a MILF yep. or just, you know, be like that much closer to the age of 30 and yeah. then you're a MILF, but, you know. Yeah, we love it. We yeah. embrace it. I mean, I'm definitely well past the milk age, so. Oh, whatever. You're still a hottie killing it. Thank you. Thank <laughs> In you. any category. Thank you. So, you're up for uh, milk Performer of the Year. Mm -hmm. What else are you up for? Best Female Group Sex Scene with Ryan Reed and Anna Claire Clouds for New Biles. Fantastic. So that was a lot of fun. Were you surprised by that scene or when you you, know, nomination, you were like, yeah, yeah? It was a great scene. It was a Valentine's Day special scene. So it was just kind of like me seducing these two girls. And I love that role. I love getting to play with girls and being, you know, the, the woman in charge in that scenario as well. But it's just so much softer and sweeter with a girl than with a guy. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a lot of fun. What kind of scenes are your favorites to do? I love... I love a MILF scene. I love a stepmom scene. And I know that that is like one of those things everybody says is like the cancer on our industry, right? <laughs> Step everything. And to some extent, I agree. But I just love performing that. I, the words come easily to me. It feels natural. It feels genuine. And I really feel like a lot of my fans love that because it kind of helps them get through some stuff. Yeah. You know, so I like to be that kind of support person there that's giving them gentle instruction or being very positive about it. You know, I don't do anything degrading and that's just not really my style. So I just love being that positive female influence in their lives. Oh, that's interesting. So you saying that like your fans find that that nurturing role was maybe something they were lacking yes. when they were younger and they're finding that yeah. with you. Yeah, and I think, you know, that has to do with me having been an elementary school teacher for five years prior to really? the industry. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, so I taught school for a long time, so I think I just have that caring nature and yeah. I have a, a, like a sweet face when I smile, yeah. so everybody just feels more at ease. So yeah. It's funny, because I've been, I was thinking about like what the worst age to teach is, because teaching is such a difficult job. It is and very it's hard. way underpaid. Absolutely. And it's like one of the most valuable roles in our society. Sure. And, um, you know, there's all these headlines now, especially since OnlyFans, like, teacher fired for doing OnlyFans. It's like, well, bitch, fucking pay, pay her more. <laughs> yes. Like, these are the people that are educating your children, yeah. like our future. Um, but I always felt that it was something that I could never do. Yeah. So, And I, it seems to me that elementary school, I feel like, I don't know if that would be harder or high school would be harder because high school, like, they just have a fucking attitude. And they know everything. Yeah. But, like, elementary school, like, they're all about, like, pushing boundaries. They want to please, but they also want to know how far they can, you know, mess around before yeah. they, they get caught. The thing about elementary is that it is such an important time. And when there aren't good you know, when it's hard to have uh, parents that are helping at home and reading with them, the, all those things are so important in those yeah. early development years. And it sets the stage for the rest of school. So if you have a bad experience there, you're likely going to hate school forever. Yeah. And I hate that. So, yeah. So um, let's talk about you just uh, produced your first feature movie. Is I that did. Correct? Yes. So I hired a director because directing is not my jam. I've learned that producing is totally my thing. I like to pay for everything and then have final say. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. So it's a, it's a dark comedy written by uh, somebody who I worked with on a mainstream uh, feature called Cassex, and it was basically just like taking a, a quasar camera and anyth anything sexy that happens in front of that, uh, they get sucked into my dimension. So I'm Cassandra Essex. Okay. And it's a very, like, it's very, like, 80s erotica. 
Oh, cool. So we, we did that together, and then we were like, let's make more movies together. This is a lot of fun. So he wrote the script, and I came up with the concept. It's about a, a simp who is a, a stepson, and he is trying to win my affection over the weekend in various ways, and antics ensue. Okay. So it's my first feature. I've never been featured before for anything, so I was like, I'm going to make my own. You know, yeah. this is my time. I feel really confident, and I'm comfortable in where I am. I know enough people who can you know, perform with me and I have my preferences of all that. So it was fun to just get to hire my friends and, yeah. you know, do the project. So it's in post-production. Hopefully it releases by March. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we're not putting any pressure on it. We just want to create a great product because the point of making a movie is to sell a movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How many scenes are in it? Uh, I think we have four or five sex scenes. We also have a softcore version. Uh, right now, the runtime you is... You really did, like, a full-on... You know, I've been doing this for almost seven years, and I see what everybody else is doing. It's right. like, if I'm performing a, a, a hardcore and a softcore scene for somebody, there's a reason. Yeah. So I was like, even though I don't know what that reason is yet and how to distribute it, I want to do that and yeah. have it just in case. Yeah. No, it's always... I mean, yes, it's a bitch, but, yeah. like, <laughs> having that softcore version, there's, like, other opportunities that can come up for that. Right. Like I know, for example, I used to direct for Wicked Pictures and they always had to shoot a softcore scene because there are certain like cable outlets that will buy that. Showtime was like their big, right. their big one that they went for. And two of my movies ended up on Showtime. And obviously they only show the softcore version. But right. like, you get a lot of money for that. Sure. Like, Showtime pays a lot. Yeah. But they're very selective about what of course. they take. So, but like having that option just allows you more opportunities to distribute yeah. your content in different areas. Yeah. And you know, the, the whole goal of the first one was to complete it, mm -hmm. right? To get one under the, one, one in, in the tank and yeah. be ready for the next one. We learned so much this time putting it together. And that's really like all I could ask for. Yeah. You know, I love going on set and learning how people do their jobs that aren't performing. But this has been like a whole new level when you're the one in charge of all of that. Yeah. So it was a lot of fun, but also very nerve wracking. It was, you know, over three months we shot it because we couldn't get the days to line up. Dude, I'm like, scheduling yes. is the worst part of it. It's yes. the worst part of producing. Yes, it is. So, yeah. you know, next time it'll be better. Yeah. <laughs> what, uh, who is in it? Uh, so I have Jaden Cole, who is a notorious girl girl performer. Yeah, so she's, she's lovely. one of my dear friends. And I was like, hey, you want to be in this movie with me? And she was like, sure. So she's like playing the like funky little friend who comes by and tries to distract the simps, uh, the, the stepson who is, uh, you know, trying to do all these different things. She's trying to distract him so I can get laid by the pool boy, Quentin James. Oh, <laughs> love. Love Quentin. Yes. Um, so that's a lot of fun. Um, and then uh, the couple next door comes over for a game night, which is really a naughty playtime. And that is Vanna Bardot and Ryan McLean. Oh, cool. Yeah. So you really have, like, good, like, headlining stars Absolutely. In there. And then my husband was... Uh, Will Pounder. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So a good little mix of, of people, you know, all Vegas based except for Vanna. So I was like, let's make this easy and not have to like bring people in and yeah. do the hotel thing or rent a location yeah. in LA, which as you know, I've heard some of your stories about locations. You <laughs> started on location stories. I got so many of so them. I, so I was like, let's just stay in Vegas. We shot it, some of it at my house and some of it at, at the director's house. So that was nice, you know, save some budget there. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. Yeah. yeah. What was the one most important thing that you think that you learned from doing this? Yeah. Uh, definitely put the days back to back. Like if at all possible, mm. have it back to back. I lost, so even I lost my momentum with yeah. my lines and remembering where we were in the script. I was like, this is a good lesson to remember to try to put at least within the same two weeks. Yeah. You know, so that even so the like, other characters aren't you know, lost and figuring out what their tone should be and all those things. But, yeah. you know, that's why I have a great director, too. So he was able to keep everybody on track, and we practiced and rehearsed a lot. It was a very little amount of dialogue and sex, but we were really focusing on getting, like, the robustness that you get in a cinematic production. Right. So that was his job, and that's why right. I'd love to hire somebody to do the things I'm not great at, because yeah. I'm great at performing. Yeah. Right? So that's that was the thing I learned, probably. The hardest lesson was... I mean, I've always said, like, as a producer, I feel like my gift isn't necessarily that I'm, like, so great at, like, doing this or holding a camera or being a photographer right. or whatever. It's that I know the right people to hire. Yes. You have the right crew, and that's that's your golden ticket. Yeah. The right crew, the right performers, and, like, you can't fuck up, yeah. basically. Yeah, and if you do fuck up, everybody's going to pull it back together yeah. and be able to, like, recover. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you also had a sex doll just molded after you I, too? Yeah, I do. I have a life-size sex doll. She looks like me. I was molded 3D modeling. We did it during the pandemic, actually. So I went to a studio in Pasadena that does, like, Westworld 
stuff. Oh, wow. And it was in this cage, and it had all these 150 DSLRs pointing in different directions. Mm -hmm. And they take one image, or they each take an image. So it's like this giant flash. Mm -hmm. And then the computer creates a composite of the 3D. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we sent that off to China with WM Doll, and they worked like to make a mold that looked like it, and then they, it was, so it was, I can't, I don't know if it's a positive mold or a negative mold, but they make that and then they fill it mm -hmm. with the material. So I think right. negative? I sure. Don't know. You know, uh, yeah. one of those. <laughs> I, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> and so she's modeled after me. Her, her parts look like my parts, and uh, the trouble is she's a full size, so she's 117 pounds. So she's a commitment, but so am I. <laughs> I love it. And where can people get this doll? You can find it at LexiLunaDoll.com. Fantastic. Yeah. And then where can people see your movie when it comes out? You'll find everything Lexi at IWantLexi.com. We're not 100% sure where we'll be distributing it, but we'll definitely make a DVD, which will be available on my store. But IWantLexi.com is the, the hot spot for everything Lexi. Okay, fantastic. Because I was going to ask you to tell everybody your socials, but it sounds like... Yeah, that's the easier there. place you can find it. than trying to be unshadow banned while I'm shadow banned. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it's smart. <laughs> Well, good luck at the awards Thank this you. weekend. It's um, so great to meet you and hang out yeah, and chit-chat. Yeah, you too. Definitely. Yeah. We'll have to have you back on for a full-length sure. podcast. I've had a lot of people request you. Awesome. So we'll make that happen. Well, I'm a diehard fan. I've listened to all your podcasts. Oh, I no, love. I'm so sorry. No, I love catching up with people in my own industry that I've worked with that you just don't get to meet somebody on set yeah. for that long of a time and really yeah, get to yeah, know yeah. them. Yeah. So it's been great for me as like somebody who's learning about peers in the industry. So right. thank you. Cool. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, Lexi, for joining us. Of course. Um, don't forget, guys, that uh, you're going to want to check out Joy City, the first erotic metaverse. They are sponsoring this podcast and essentially my entire weekend here in Vegas. So go to joy.city, enter your email address, and keep up to date on everything that we've got going on. Thank you guys so much for watching.